Blake, please sit down and take a rest, said Mrs. Parker, watching how briskly the girl handled the household chores. Oh, I'm fine, Mrs. Parker. It's not hard for me, smiled Blake. You know, I used to be just as young and brisk too, sighed the older woman. Blake went over to her, sat down next to her on a chair, and again admired the large portrait on the wall. It depicted a beautiful young woman, enigmatic and graceful, as a countess. Blake looked at Mrs. Parker's portrait in her youth with fascination, and thought that this woman could not be broken, neither by age nor by illness. Even now, when she was barely out of bed any more, Blake always caught her in full dress. You look so beautiful here. Blake did not hold back her admiration, nodding at the portrait. Yes, I'm only twenty-three years old there. Don't you think, dear, that you look a lot like me when I was young? Maybe a little, smiled Blake, but I'm a long way from you, sighed the girl, and rushed off to the kitchen. When Blake left, Mrs. Parker tiredly covered her eyes and decided to take a little nap before the male woman came. She liked to talk, and Mrs. Parker would have to listen to her chatter for an hour. But at least this time, the time would pass faster until evening. Mrs. Parker was disliked and feared in the village, considered a witch. People said she'd brought her husband to his grave, and that when she was younger, she could steal any man away from the family with one look. And someone also said that she had a son, but that he hadn't been in the village for a long time. Maybe she'd kicked him out, or it might be he ran away from her. No one knew for sure. But Mrs. Parker did not care what others thought of her. She made no attempts to get close to anyone from the village, and people increasingly bypassed her. And even when Mrs. Parker had grown old, people's opinions of her had not changed. The door slammed and Tonya, the mailwoman, said hello to Mrs. Parker. She went into the room, dropped her heavy bag and began to look for the right message in it, at the same time telling the village news. Mrs. Parker occasionally inserted caustic comments and muttered something angrily to herself. At last, Tonya found what she was looking for. It was a large transfer in Mrs. Parker's name. Tonya looked at the woman and asked ingeniously, who was sending her such large sums. Why do you care? You'd better keep your mouth shut, Mrs. Parker sharply rebuked her. Tonya was offended. Why do you say that? I've never told anyone in all these years. Mrs. Parker herself realized that she had undeservedly offended the woman and hurried to apologize. When Tonya left, Mrs. Parker, having gathered her strength, got up and put away the money in a big chest that was under her bed. A large bundle of money had already accumulated there. Then she looked at her portrait and took a notebook from the table. Tonight she dreamed of her late husband, who told her to get ready, and the woman decided it was time to confess her sins and ask forgiveness. Blake was tired and sat down on a bench by the gate. She had lived alone for a long time, the girl's mother died when she was fifteen, but she did not know her grandmother, and she never had a father, as her grandfather had told her. After his only daughter had died, Blake's grandfather became frequently ill. Blake dreamed of going to college, but she could not leave her sick grandfather alone. She had to get a job on the farm, since there was no other work in their small village. When her grandfather died, Blake felt acute loneliness and hopelessness. The wages paid at the farm were enough only to live on, and she needed money to go to the city to study. There was almost no hope that her life would change. Although Blake's family didn't like Mrs. Parker either, the girl unexpectedly became close to the woman. She often helped her around the house, or just came by to see how she was doing and if she needed anything at the store. In Blake's eyes, Mrs. Parker was as if from another life, where Blake had always dreamed to go. One evening, the girl was returning from the farm. She had a bad feeling, so she decided to visit Mrs. Parker and make sure she was doing well. 
She went into the house and called out to the woman, but no one answered. Then she called again, and, getting no answer, she opened the door to Mrs. Parker's room and froze with horror. The elderly woman was lying on the bed, but too strange for an alive person. Blake wept. She felt insanely sorry for the elderly woman, and she was also bitter that she was alone again. On the table there was a note and money for the funeral. In the note, Mrs. Parker said that she had bequeathed her house and the things in it to Blake. A month had passed since the funeral, and Blake finally found the strength to sort through Mrs. Parker's things. She decided to start with the chest, which Mrs. Parker had always said was the keeper of all her secrets. In the chest, under a pile of old pictures of people that Blake didn't know, she saw a thick package with writing on it. Thinking it was some old letters, she wanted to put away for later, but then she saw her name on it, and her heart started beating frantically. In the envelope were several pictures and a letter. On one of the cards, Blake was surprised to see her young mother hugging a handsome young man. With trembling fingers, she unwrapped the letter and began to read. Blake, if you're reading this letter, it means I have gone. I don't know if you will ever forgive me. I broke everyone's life, even myself. Many years ago, my son George fell in love with your mother. I had very different plans for him. He graduated from university and was invited to intern at an international company and suddenly he fell in love with a simple milkmaid. I couldn't let this infatuation ruin his career and I did everything I could to prevent it. George was told many bad things about your mother and in a fit of resentment he packed up and left one day. And then your mother left for the city a year later, she came back with you. At first, I couldn't understand who you reminded me of, and only then I realized that you were George's daughter. When your mother was gone, I confessed to my son that I deceived him, and all those terrible words about your mother were just lies. He didn't forgive me, and he's been sending me money ever since. Forgive me, but I couldn't tell him about you. He knows nothing about you. I'll leave his phone number and address at the end of the letter. Call him and let him read the letter. I don't know whether your relationship will work out or not, but at the bottom of that chest is the money George had sent to me. I didn't spend any of it because I think it's your money. Forgive me, granddaughter. Forgive me, George. The letter fell out of Blake's hands, and the girl silently stared at one point. Then she picked up the picture again, looked at the happy mother and the man beside her, and wept bitterly. Blake thought for days, and yet finally decided to call Mrs. Parker's son to inform him of his mother's death. Hello? Who is this? She heard a commanding male voice in the receiver, and she was frightened. Hello? Who is this? She heard a commanding male voice in the receiver, and she was frightened. Hello, this is Blake. I'm calling to tell you that your mother died a month ago. The girl did not even dare to say that she was his daughter, because there was no guarantee that he was even interested. The man on the other end of the line was silent for a long time, and then he promised to come over today. In the evening, an expensive car drove up to the house and a tall man in a business suit got out. When she saw George, Blake was completely embarrassed. Are you Blake? He asked, entering the house. Yes, I've been helping Mrs. Parker around the house. George strode across the room and froze near the portrait of his mother. Blake came up and handed the man the letter and the pictures. Your mother left this for me, and she would like you to read it too, Blake said quietly. 
George began to read and immediately looked at the girl in amazement. When he reached the end, he sat silent for a long time, and then with all his might, slammed his fist on the table. Oh, Mum! he whispered in despair. Blake was frightened and hastened to assure the man that she did not need anything and that he did not have to worry about it. George looked at the girl confusedly and smiled slightly. Honestly, I just don't know what to do with you. I mean, I never got married once, and I never had kids either. And now, suddenly, I have a grown-up daughter. Well, I never had a father either, but I am not breaking the furniture, Blake said with a sigh of relief, and George laughed. Later, he asked Blake to accompany him to Mrs. Parker's grave. No matter how guilty she was in front of everyone, after all, she was his mother. All the villagers who crossed their path greeted them and looked at them in amazement, because it was not hard to notice the striking resemblance of George and Blake. Remembering the old story and comparing all the facts, by the evening, everyone knew that her father the son of the dead Mrs. Parker, who was disliked by everyone, had come for Blake. A couple of days later, the whole village gathered in front of Mrs. Parker's house to see the girl off. Blake stood beside George in her beautiful new suit and smiled shyly. Some of the villagers asked what was going to happen to that huge house now. The house belongs to my daughter. Let her decide, smiled George. Maybe she'll sell it, or maybe she'll be using it as a summer house. Blake was embarrassed. She could not yet get used to the role of a daughter, although she and George had become good friends over the three days. He told her a lot about her mother and how they had met and fallen in love. They had time to discuss where Blake would now study, and the girl felt for the first time that her life was beginning to change. Before leaving, Blake decided to go to the cemetery and say goodbye to her mother and grandfather. George followed her. When she talked to her mother and got ready to leave, she noticed that George had tears in his eyes. She understood that this was very difficult for him. He asked her to go back to the car and stayed behind. As she was leaving, Blake turned around and saw George walk over to her mother's grave and say, well, hello, my love. Forgive me for my foolish gullibility. When he returned fifteen minutes later, eyes red with tears, Blake didn't ask anything. Well, daughter, are you ready for your new life? said George, getting behind the wheel. Blake smiled and answered confidently. Yes, daddy, 